Hi again. Welcome back to another Origin video. Today I've got the Calcium Origin created by the user known as Alex. Uh, sorry about for the missing videos for like a week. Uh, I, my body decided it'd be a great idea to get sick and basically just having issues, voice sound like garbage and it was just easy to not make videos in that time frame. So uh, here we are. The Calcium is a three impact origin. Creatures of the end. Calcium are bound to the end dimension and as such have learned to thrive off it. So the biggest thing that I just want to point out right off the bat, your spawn is set to the end dimension. If you don't understand what that ends up me what that means, then let me just show you. And because your spawn is in the end dimension, the end portal is completely useless to you, at least for going to the overworld. Because your spawn is in the end dimension, you can never leave the end dimension, no matter what. That's always the biggest problem with any origin that spawns you in the end dimension by default. There is literally no way you can get out of the end dimension, unless you do some shenanigans with another origin. I guess the first thing to keep in mind is, so what about all the stuff in the overworld? Are you just stuck in the end dimension with nothing useful? Well, here's the first major thing. Endstone is going to become your best friend. You see, by breaking it, nothing there. By breaking in stone, there is a small ch there's a chance that you'll get a random item just in general. A random vanilla overworld item. And from what I've told with testing, the pool of items is massive. I don't know how to feel about this ability first off. I like the concept. I like the idea. The whole that you'll break end stone and because you've been here for so long, you can convert the end stone that you break into various different overworld items. But then you just have problems with a lot of the items you get are ultimately meaningless without having, like, there's just a lot of stuff you get that is not necessary to get. When in reality, you're going to be wanting to get wood and stone a lot more, especially early on, especially with this origin, because this origin can't eat any food. Let's go into the abilities here. As you can see, you've adapted to this diet. We'll get back to what the diet is, but it means that you can't eat any other foods. So what is the diet? You're familiar with the, con the properties of coarse fruit, and as such, you can eat popped coarse fruit. So this does mean that you're going to need to go to one of these things and smack it down and grab yourself a bunch of chorus fruit. But hey, there's a problem. You can't eat the chorus fruit. It's unedible. What you need instead is you need to get popped chorus fruit. The way you do that, you need to get a furnace. To get a furnace with this, you need to get nine, nine cobblestone. You need to get a bunch of wood. You need to get a lot of things to be able to get to this point here. And then you still need more wood to create yourself some coal. Which, that in and of itself means that you're going to be grinding away at endstone a lot. And I don't think that's inherently a bad problem. With some tweaks and balancing, you could actually make this really good. The problem is that it's a lot of grind in the first place to get to this point here. To progress into the origin itself. There's a really big thing why you want, like, A, this is your food source, you're going to need it anyway, but then it also gives you another benefit that works with your origin. So, let's get our pop curious fruit out here. So, a pop curious fruit, when you eat it, will give you levitation for about five seconds. You can then convert this levitation boost that you get into abilities. So let's grab another, let's grab out some pop curious fruit that's currently cooking. We're going to eat one up and we're going to go up. We can press G to dash with that levitation. It converts the levitation effect into a form of dash. So if we grab and eat another one, we float up a little bit and then we press Y, we slam down. This ability is interesting. It can deal damage, especially if like you do, yeah, like that. When you press your secondary key, it will slam you back down to the ground, do nothing, but then your next jump will do damage. 
which does lead you to have a very annoying problem of dealing with endermen that are now going to come after you because you just hurt them on accident. So you get most of your items from Endstone. So what, you want to explore the end dimension and get to the end cities and all that in order to mine faster and all that? Unfortunately, no, you're apparently in line. You cannot wear any accessories or hold any tools or use any weapons. You get yourself a diamond pick. Let me just throw it on the ground here and we're going to pick it up it gets immediately spat out of that inventory. Basically, you're forced to grind these end stones at this pace and just break away. The only food source you can eat is popped chorus fruit. And the only way you get popped chorus fruit is by cooking it in a furnace. Cooking chorus fruit in a furnace. You don't get popped chorus fruit in any other way. So that's the first core problem. You need a way to get chorus fruit popped chorus fruit efficiently for your food. One, one oak log from the end stone, convert that into a crafting table, and then you need to get nine cobblestone from the end blocks, turn that into your furnace, and then you need to get a few more logs or some form of flammable material. And well, the likelihood of that, of getting a nine cobblestone is very difficult. Another additional thing, there are also artifacts apparently hidden in amongst all this. Where are we going? Artifact extraction. So you can extract the powers of void artifacts in order to gain boost to your stats. Void artifacts can be obtained occasionally when breaking a block. Again, inherent problem. A lot of these things is to do with breaking blocks. And at the, like I, the, the idea of your you break end blocks faster than what you would usually, yeah, that at least is a smart thing to do, but I think it's still too slow. Like, for example, flowers. They exist. What else are you going to use flowers for? But here's a little funny thing. Flowers get used... You can use flowers in order to create suspicious, suspicious stews with various different effects. So a solution to this problem that I could think about is the flowers you could collect you can actually eat and they'll give you various different buffs for example a flower that like something that's probably doable a flower that gives you haste for a period of time like let's say it, the flower the poppy gives i don't know haste for 60 seconds at a power of we'll go six because that's overkill and so you can start breaking blocks faster i don't think i don't know if you can actually like if we go a higher amplification of yeah nah th that's already breaking as fast as we can the haste has done nothing to help. That's a problem. Again, I do like the idea behind this origin and what the person who's created is attempting to do here, but I feel like that there's just a lot of problems with it. I'm probably going to sit here for a bit and just break a bunch of blocks and see if I can get any void artifacts. A wee bit tired. <laughs> I've kind of just mined a chunk from about here all the way around the corner for the past, I'd say, 15 to 20-ish minutes. And ultimately what I've grabbed so far is all this stuff and a few extra bits and bobs that are still in my inventory. And this does include the stuff that I spammed mine earlier when I was hasting a little with the uh, dime pick down here. I don't know. I have not gotten one of those void artifacts from what I can tell. What I do see is a bunch of ultimately not so useful items. Again, like so many flowers. What are you going to do with all those flowers when you're permanently stuck in the end dimension and stuff like that? Like there's some things here that I just see and I'm just like, I don't know, I think just some, some interesting tweak. Like probably the first thing I'd say is let us use pickaxes. The only way we can realistically get pickaxes outside of endlessly grinding the end stone is to make it to an end city where you can find diamond pickaxes that are sometimes also enchanted. And that can be used to help make this process of the origin a lot easier to do. Uh, ultimately, I don't know. Again, this is only like 10 minutes of mining. The void artifacts might be more common. Like, you might need to do a lot more grinding. But sifting through here, there seems to be some armor upgrades, some 
artifact resource damage up five damage upgrades hoe hands so the ability to hoe dirt with your hands various different keys I don't know what these do there's also mining uh, and a mining upgrade there's quite a few different things you can find from the void artifacts but again the odd like I did not get a single one yet I don't know how to actually get one properly I don't even know what they look look like to be completely honest <laughs> I don't know I like the concept of this origin I truly do I, I do think that we need a really interesting origin for the end dimension that can lead to some very interesting playing styles and I like where this idea is going I like the idea that he has an origin that has been born has lived in the end dimension for multiple generations you've somehow found a way to process end stone into various different materials that would usually only be gained via the overworld and i love that idea but i think how often you get an item is i think might be a little bit on the low side the pool of items seems to be excessively large like, as I said, there's a lot of things in here that I'm not sure are absolutely necessary to be found here. And as I said, most of them are just the flowers. Like, yeah, you can plant them and all that when you get enough grass and dirt around. But it's one of those things where that's just more for decorations at that point. Wouldn't at least... Like, yeah, I would understand later on as an origin at the late game, once you've built up a fair bit, you would just not care what you get anymore. But... Honestly, in the earlier game, you'd be just chasing the resources, chasing wood and stone and other materials to help build up your character better. Again, I don't... I'm not 100% sure the odds of the void artifacts, but I feel like I'm... And I'm also not 100% sure how potent they are when you do get one. I, I feel... like It just feels like this origin is excessively grindy. And there could just be some tweaks made to make it less so excessively grindy, but still be a very cool concept of an origin. But hey, that's just my thoughts. What do you guys think about this? Do you think there's a cool concept behind here? Or do you think this is just another end origin you won't actually care about? Either way, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, click this video on screen now and bye-bye!